Okay, this is sort of an experiment. I won't appear in this video. I'm going to be behind the scenes. The deal is that I got myself a microphone, my first ever microphone, and I decided to test it. Either way, I have wanted to talk about this for a long time already. I originally intended to keep this behind the scenes, but I have thoughts and I want to share them. Maybe this shall resonate with you. I am here to share my approach to this topic and I will address it only once. I intend to keep quiet about it in my future videos. Okay, let's do it. Greetings, welcome to the Metal Book Tavern. Welcome to this rant. Fact about me, I like discovering new things, especially books and music. Now, I have already made a video about a similar topic. Um, link in the description where I talk about uh, sticking up to old favorites versus discovering new artists. Okay, back to the main point. I open Spotify and when I want to listen to something other than my established favorites, I take a dive into other genres or bands. I go to the bookstore and look at different books. If I see something that catches my eye, I give it a chance. This is how I discovered the first law. I just went to the bookstore, saw the blade itself, read the annotation, liked it, and I got it. Then I ordered the next two books, because I liked the first one. I am still waiting for the first law to be adapted into a high-quality TV show. All in all, all I am interested in is art itself. If I like it, it stays. If I don't, it goes. Plain and simple. When I invest myself in books and music, the one thing I don't think about, at least not until I finish reading, listening, is the creator's background. In some cases I don't bother checking it out at all. I like the first law, but I didn't bother fighting out too much about Joe Abercrombie, even though I follow him on Twitter and he even retweeted one of my posts. I don't even go to Twitter that often. I rarely go there. When I decide to check out things about new bands from Spotify, I only want to know where these bands come from. Most of the bands I come across on Spotify are European for some reason. Okay, back to the main point. Sooner or later, after you are done with the piece of art, you become interested in its creator. This is absolutely normal. This person made the piece of art you enjoyed so much, and you want to know about them. Or if the creator is super famous, information about them finds you. Hollywood celebrities are a prime example of this. And here comes the shocking part. You check out information on the creator, and you find out something controversial about them. A lot has been said about such creators, especially in the last two or three years. In this video, I want to share my take on this. My take only. If you want to check out uh, videos about the creators, I'm sure you can find such videos elsewhere. Part 1. A bit of backstory on how metal taught me to be patient. I'd like to start with metal. Not a particular band, but the genre itself in early days. Dig information on any big name metal band from the 70s or 80s, and you'll find out what they were up to. When I first found out about what they did, I didn't like it. To be honest, there is nothing to appreciate about the wild rock and roll lifestyle. And I guess most old rockers actually agree with this. Nonetheless, for me, music turned out to be louder than their lifestyle. By the way, I can say that the very first consequence of metal for me is that I became tolerant towards some forms of alcohol during my university days. I really like to drink wine, moderately and rarely, but still. It used to be fun. Nowadays, I stay away from wine and alcohol in general. I guess I have become a boring person. <laughs> wow, this podcast is becoming a podcast of confessions. Okay, never mind. I know that there are much more serious matters than uh, wild lifestyle, but my point is simple and relevant to the topic of this brand. My love for music in general turned out to be stronger. 
and I can listen to music and I appreciate art. I appreciated music and I looked past the whole lifestyle thing. That was in the early 2010s. Fast forward to 2020. That was the year when controversies gained more attention than ever. People developed strong opinions on this. Now we have come to the point of this video. Part 2. How I approach creators with controversies. Here's what I do if I find out there is a creator controversy. I do nothing. Yes, I do nothing. I continue enjoying their creations, their books, their music, their films and so on, like I enjoyed them before I got to know what happened. But that's predominantly my approach towards creators I am a long time fan of. What about the new creators? The answer is simple. I ask myself, am I really interested in their art? If the answer is yes, then I go ahead and check out their work. Although the weight of their work has to be much heavier than the controversy, if all I hear about the creator is A said this and A did that and nothing much about the art, then they can get lost. Partly because they have nothing interesting to offer or they have very little to offer. There's one American musician, rock musician that comes to my mind. I won't say his name, but he is predominantly known for stating his opinions on things. I don't really pay attention to what he says. What matters to me is that he talks a lot and uh, there's nothing about his music being said. At least not too much. So never mind. I can also ditch creators I lost interest in. In general, I don't need controversies to ditch them. If I have no interest in them, I won't follow them on social media and I won't check out their books, music and so on. In this case, controversy is not the reason, but rather a good motive to ditch them much quicker. Recently, I discovered that most creators I enjoy also happen to be creators without too many controversies. Most of these people love what they do and the bands I enjoy either aren't into the rock and roll lifestyle or they weren't strongly into it in the first place or got over it and nobody talks about it anymore. I see the correlation between their focus on what they do and the absence of controversies. Either way, I hope they remain this way. I do have to mention that most of these people are pretty niche compared to some major stars, but the correlation is still there. Well, these people are not only writers and musicians, but also YouTubers. Major stars are more about the image and publicity rather than their work. And such stars don't resonate with me, even without the controversies. The mainstream versus niche talk is an interesting topic and deserves a separate video. In short, my interest for art is stronger than the artist persona. If I am interested in art, no one can stop me. That's all. I think this is a healthy approach. I hope you agree with me. I also wanted to discuss uh, guilty by association. I mean, when the artist is under attack, uh, not for their actions, but for actions of someone else. But uh, instead, I'm going to finish this video. Guilt by association is... Uh, I need to test different topic and I don't think I'm going to do that, but still. Anyway, that's all. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this. I remind you that this is sort of an experiment and I will try to make more of this because I like uh, the rants. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening once again.